All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another great episode of Lunch with Doug. Today, we're going to have Kimra on the episode. Kimra is a musician, and Kimra is awesome. She plays all over in the area, and uh, you know her, and you love her, and she'll be on the phone with me today right after this. Welcome to a brand new episode of Lunch with Tug, a unique and fun experience brought to you by the creative minds here at the Music Exervia Project. We are here today thanks to the generous support of our esteemed sponsors. Harry Frog Graphics, your go-to destination for all things graphic at 150 North Commercial Street in Nevada, Missouri. Reach out to them at 417-381-1077. Karen McNair, your friendly neighborhood nutritionist, dial 269-267-4644 to learn about the monthly information class or to schedule a personal consultation. John's Barbershop, located at 121 West Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri, open Tuesday through Friday. Walk-ins are welcome, no appointment needed. American Legion Post Number 2, located at 402 East Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri, newly remodeled with a fresh, clean look, gaming machines, and new smoke heaters, open to the public. Express Printing and Hydrographics, a print shop and a commercial grade hydro dipping facility with custom wide format hydro film printing capability. Located at 14144 East Highway 54 at Adams Plaza. Contact them at 417 283 2005. Thank you for choosing to spend your lunchtime with me. All right, folks, on the phone as promised, our good friend, Kimra. Hello, Kimra. Hello. How you been doing? Oh, I've been doing awesome. How about you? Oh, awesome as well. I mean, I, I've been betedly waited for this day. You know, I've been counting down the days for the day I get to have Kimra on the show, and you are here today. This is fantastic. Yeah, it's it's been a minute. I don't even remember what year that was that you interviewed me at my last show in Carthage. You had but... you have been on lunch with Doug before. That was our that only was, once. That was like our <laughs> first season. That was season one. Wow, I, I know. I I literally forgot about that. Yeah, I rewatched that the other day to check it out, and uh, it was pretty cool. <laughs> So well, thanks. I'm grateful to be here again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've came a long ways. We're audio only now. We back then I had videos, you know. So we're just yeah. audio and TikTok, but that's all we do. I now. know. TikTok's taken over. It's like, yeah, it's like, what happened? Here's TikTok. So, all right. So let's freshen up. It's been, this is, we're season nine, eight years, season nine. I don't know how we got nine season in eight years, but somehow magically we did that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so tell the listeners if they're new to Kimmer, you're a musician, but you do a number of great things out there as well as that. But you were, uh, you were in Nashville and you got a record deal and you've got music out, like catch us up to speed. What has been happening in Kimmer's world? Um, so I have not recorded music for almost the last five years. Um, you know, COVID happened. So I took a break with my band. Um, and then I surprisingly got pregnant (laughs) and had my daughter. Um, she's three and a half now. Um, so, and then I started playing music. Let's see when she turned three, right before she turned three, I think I started playing publicly again. And, um, ever since then, you know, I've just been kind of snowballing in a good sense, uh, just growing and growing. Um, you know, I've, I've been writing since I've had my daughter. Um, I'm I'm never going to stop writing. I'm always going to do that for as long as I live. Um, and I've just had these songs on the back burner that I've wanted to get recorded. Um, and you know, I think it's, I'm going to say it's really important in the music industry to network. I, I don't care if you live here, if you live in Nashville, it doesn't matter where you live. I think if you're a musician, then you should network with as many people as you can meet, meet as many people as you can introduce yourself. Um, So I, I took a trip to Nashville and, um, met a good friend of mine. He tours with Josh Turner and, um, he is helping me record this next album in Nashville, um, down on music row, which I've never done before. Um, so I'm very excited about that and to even have that opportunity, but I wouldn't have had that opportunity if I wouldn't have, you know, said hello (laughs) while I was in Nashville. So, um, you just never know where. The music road is going to lead you, so I highly recommend just get getting yourself out there, whether it's a free gig or a paid gig or shaking a hand to somebody of another musician. You just never know. But anyways, um, so 
next week, actually, I'll be back in Nashville um, to record my fifth EP with new music. So I'm very excited about that. Um, it's going to be very cool. A lot of firsts for me, you know, it's going to be recording down on Music Row. It'll be the first time my guitarist is singing harmonies with me on an album. Um, the first time I'm singing a song that I wrote for my daughter. Um, gosh, I just, and some of the musicians that I'm going to have in the studio with me are people that tour with country music artists every year. So I'm grateful to have those people under my belt as well. Um, you know, in the past I've had Tim McGraw's old drummer, uh, Big and Rich's old still pedal player, you know, just people like that, that do this every single day. And it's humbling to be in their presence and just sit down. They can listen to my song one time and then they can just play. It's that's just always blown me away that people can just sit and do that. But, um, anyways, so I'm very excited to do all of those things next week. I'll be there next Wednesday through Sunday to get it all knocked out. So, um, and then I guess the other big thing that I've been up to is, uh, I started booking, um, shows for local musicians and I've done that for the past year. And that's also been a really cool, rewarding experience to help other people out. Cause, um, when I toured, I toured for six years with my band and did all of those things myself. You know, I never had a manager or anything like that. So, um, it's a lot of work and, now that I do it for 11 people, I don't know <laughs> how the heck I do it, but uh, it's been really cool. So, yeah. Well, you're Kimra. Amazing things happen when you have a name like Kimra. I know. You know what? When people ask me what my name means, I'm like, it means awesome. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. You didn't, get, you didn't catch that? Yeah, that's uh, awesome. So you got 11 artists. You got a roster. You got a, your, your, your thing. And you're hopefully you're going to tour when you get this done, right? I mean, is that the plan or what's the plan? Yeah. I mean, you know, I still do acoustic shows. I've been booking acoustic shows like crazy. Um, I try, I try not to book every weekend just cause I want to have time with my daughter and my family on some weekends. But, um, I don't know. I'm hoping that after I release this album, I can get a band together and hopefully do that again. Um, I know I want to do an al album release party. I don't know when that's going to be, but I would like to have a band behind me for that. It will, it'll probably be in Springfield, Missouri. Um, I think I have a location, but I just got to nail down dates and all that, all the details and all that fun stuff. So yeah. um, I guess stay tuned for that. <laughs> You'll call us again, right? You'll let us know. Yeah. You're invited. Are you kidding me? I'll get an invite. I did get an invite from you to your uh, artist thing and I had something going on that that's day. I really wanted That's to okay. go. I was so I was so excited. I saved it. It's like pinned up on the wall. That's how excited hey. I was. Oh, I was like, well, Kimra okay, invited me. Well, I'll I'll invite you again next year, but the one next year is going to be in Nashville. Oh. <laughs> so well, if you want to, all the more reason for me to want to go. There you go. Boom. It's a good time. Nashville next year. I haven't been to Nashville, Nashville in a while, next. so maybe that'd be a good time oh, for me man. to go see you. My, Will you be playing at home. that one? Will you be playing yes. at that one the next year? Okay, yep. cool, cool. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So, uh, what's your what's cool. your big song? Like, if we're gonna, one of the listeners is like, okay, so Kimra, I'm gonna go to Kimra on Spotify or Apple right now. What song should they hear first from you? Um, I mean, from my last album, well, from my last album, I would say not drinking, and then just probably one of my all-time favorite songs that I've ever written is Forgive and Forget from my second EP. All right. That'll get them started, right? Yeah. The world of yeah. camera. Any of yeah, your... it's, it's, I was going to say, it's, it's crazy, you know, because like when I first started this, um, I feel like artists should grow and change a little bit with their sound and things like that. And you can definitely tell that from my first one to my most recent, so. Yeah, for sure. That's everybody. Well, and from album to album, you do things different. Like you might want to try something just for that album. Like what's it going to what's it going to be? Let's do this this way this time and then maybe it's awesome and we'll do it again and maybe we'll do something different completely different next time. Yeah. I mean, I've always said my sound is <laughs> if uh Randall Lambert and Casey Musgraves had a baby, it would be me. Nice. <laughs> so, that's what I've always said, you know, I kind of have 
I feel like I got a little bit of her look and a little bit of her sound, but the music is more Miranda with a little bit of Casey sprinkled in. So I like this. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. Miranda was a little more wild. Are you a little more wild too? <laughs> uh, you know what? If the <laughs> if if the times <laughs> call for it, you know, in the situation, I like to have a good time. It is what it is. So yeah. I you only get one shot to live this life and I'm going to do all the things I can and have a good time while I'm doing it. So that is a good outlook on life for sure. So you, yeah. do you want to plug any of your other people that you're uh, booking? Anything great to say about some of your roster people? Oh my gosh. I could say, I, I mean, we don't have enough time for that, <laughs> but um, I mean, I'm really picky about who I add. I feel like everybody I have under my, belt right now and they all know this you know I I consider them family they're my music family you know I feel like they're my kids so um I take care care of everybody is the best I can and um support them the best I can back them up because if it's anything that anyone knows about me is like I believe in good music and I believe in good songwriters um songwriting is hard you know not everybody can just sit down and write a song, um, whether it's catchy or not, you know, I, I think it it takes a lot for somebody to write a good song that connects with a group of people. So, um, a lot of these people do that and write more songs than I do, uh, on a daily basis. And it's just amazing that they can sit down and do that every single day. But, um, let's see if I can remember everybody. Um, so there's Holly Craze, Quentin Scott, Garrick Fawcett, uh, Morgan Rohr, Brad Hempel, Buster Clifton Davis. Um, And then I have my bands. Um, I have Sound the Alarm, third cover band, um, 2000s. I have Outlaws Reloaded. They're also a cover band for like 90s country red dirt. Um, And then Garrick, Buster, and Holly all have their own bands. So they're trying to ramp up their bands this year to to get a little more exposure and we're working on that for next year. So very cool. Yeah. I guess you'll let us talk to some of them, won't you, on the show in the future? Absolutely. You'll send them. I mean, if I'm lucky, you'll have all of them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I'm sure we've got enough episodes. Well, we got till the end of December for season yeah. eight. So uh yeah, we got yeah. we got eleven slots oh, and, for sure. And Jake Clark. I miss Jake Clark. Jake's upset with you right now. <laughs> I'm I know. just kidding. Sorry, Jake. I love you, bro. <laughs> he was like, she didn't say me. Where's where's Jake Clark? <laughs> That's all right. I'll get a text later. It'll be okay. <laughs> it happens. It's it's when you're busy and you got so many things going. Like you got you're writing songs, you're taking care of a family, you're you're making some music yourself, um, and in the live spectrum, and then you're you're handling eleven other people, and that's uh that's a big job. And I'm sure you've got some other things in this in this mix as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's always things I've got on the back burner. Um, Like one of my goals for next year for myself um, is to network with more songwriters. I've never written with anybody. I've always just written my own stuff. And um, one of my goals is just to go to Nashville quarterly or more often and just start writing with people and see if anything happens. I may hate it. I I don't know. You know, I'm not going to know until I try. So I'm going to do that. and then. Another goal is to uh, record more duets with people as well. So um, me and one of my other artists have a duet kind of in the works that we've collaborated together on. So I'm excited to finish that one up and hopefully record it next year. Um, You know, I'd love to do, I was just telling one of my musicians today, I'd love to do a KDK album with everybody to write one song for this album and record that and have that for next year, you know, so just all kinds of crazy things. Um, and then yeah, our, my concert series that I did with everybody this past year, I did at the Riff in Springfield. Um, I've been talking to the guy that I book shows with at 10 Roof in Kansas city. And my goal and my hope is to have that event in Nashville at the 10 Roof next year. So Nashville 10 Roof. Yeah. It's a cool place. Yeah. I, I believe it's downtown. So lots of exposure for these people and, like I said, I mean, any anything like that for exposure or meeting people, you just never know. I want I want that opportunity for myself and my artists. So I think, it, I think it'll be really cool. 
I think it will be cool too. And um, I'll have to come. Maybe I might. I don't get out. <laughs> I don't get out of my town very often. But I, I, I mean, I do, but not not as much as I used to. But I might come That's for camera. Right. And a lot of other people, That's I think, right. will too. Yeah, I'm excited. And if we don't have it there, I'll find out another local spot to have it so more people could come check it out. So, but definitely, if anyone can go to any of our shows and support us, we greatly appreciate it. Um, I don't think venues and uh, people realize how much it means to singer songwriters to just be at a show and support live music because it's huge for for us and for all of those people trying to do it. So, absolutely, absolutely. And did you uh you do some stuff? This is one of the ones kind of regionally here. Uh, the little pickle Pete's is a cool place. You've been doing some stuff with your artists over there, or not? Um, they so they are only booking bands now. So, but I do have I think three of my people or four of my people booked there. So, um, yeah, definitely head up pickled Pete's. They have always supported songwriters and live music. So. That's that's a great place to go two step and hang out and have a good dinner. For sure, for sure. Yep. I don't know why I thought of that. I just songwriters, I know they support a lot of songwriters over there. Or or they were they talk about that. Yeah. Um so funny story about that. They did the songwriter series this last year or this year. And um I went I didn't get to go the year prior, but um <laughs> so it was funny because I think I was like in third place. Stacy, the owner, was texting me and was like, "Hey, can you come back up here? I think you're in third place." And I was like, "Oh, cool." And I had let one of my other singer songwriter friends know about it last minute, and she signed up that day. I think <laughs> and ended up getting third place. <laughs> so <laughs> they liked her. They liked her so much, which I think was awesome. But I always give her crap. I'm like, "You beat me out of third place," <laughs> but. I was happy for. Yeah, you it was en- a cool event. You encouraged her to sign up, and then she took your spot. Like shame, shame. I know, and I could have <laughs> been mad about it, but why be mad about it? I was like, that is so funny, you know. Yeah, just well, a, a funny memory. I have. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts. I mean, I'm not saying contests are bad by any means, but I have a lot of thoughts on contests and contests. Man, they are, they are really. It depends on who's there that day, kind of who's judging, and there's a. It can be different. Same contest can be completely different from year to year, depending on the judges and stuff. So it's just all kind of and what's happening in the world, you know, right then. Yeah. What's, what's super popular this week might be not super popular in two more weeks. And it's so it's so subjective, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I've I've tried out for American Idol and The Voice a handful of times each and, you know, when you're standing in line, you can hear other people singing and they're way better than I am and they're not getting picked. And it's like, why, what are these people looking for? You know, you just, you never know what sound, like you said, like what sound, what look you have, you have no idea because each room could be looking for a different thing, you know? And I've always said that too, you know, what if Carrie, what Underwood would have went to a different table, you know, what could they probably wouldn't have picked her. So Whenever she tried out, you just, you never know. Exactly. She lucked out. She got at the right table. Those people were into what she was doing. They liked it. And had, like you said, had she went to a different table, it might not have been the same. We might not even know who she is. <laughs> you know? I know. I know. Crazy, crazy. Very crazy. And there's so many people. I wonder how many people auditioned for those shows. Do you know? Oh, my gosh. I think the first time I waited 10 hours to sing for 20 seconds. 10 hour wait, 20 second yes. audition. Wow. That was my first American Idol audition. I'll never do that again. <laughs> uh, that. Oh, my gosh. That was crazy. I think the other ones were just like maybe four hours of waiting, which yeah. was better. But Yeah, that's better. So how many people you think at your first one you waited 10 hours? How many people were in front of you, you think? Oh, my gosh. It, the whole stadium was full. Well, it was in St. Louis. Um, there are thousands of people. I mean, I can't even guess because there was just too many. Yeah. Yeah. So for every... So many thousand people that come through, like literally, there's just like, well, how many do they pick? They pick like six now, eight. I don't even know. I don't. I I don't even know. I wouldn't even guess they pick six people that day. I mean, it could be wrong, but who yeah. knows? Yeah, it's crazy, crazy. <laughs> but hey, you know what? I I still think that people should do things like that because it's an experience, and 
I've made friends from doing, from going to things like that. Um, crazy. The one I did in Nashville, um, I was sitting next to a girl and was talking to her and I told her where I was from and she goes, oh my gosh, I live in Branson, Missouri. And I'm like, what? How is that possible? I'm in Nashville and I live in Springfield and you live in Branson and I'm sitting right next to you. Like, oh, that was crazy. Small world. Yeah. Very bizarre. Yep. Do you play in Branson at, at all? Do you ever gig down there? <laughs> Um, you know, actually, oddly enough, I'll be there Saturday. I'm playing at the Ozarker Lodge in their lobby from six to eight and just like acoustic show, but it's very chill. Um, I love it there. It's just a, a different vibe at that place, but the people are really nice. And I played there a month or so ago and they were like, can you come back? And I said, absolutely. I'll do a Thanksgiving weekend show. So that's amazing. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. Well, that's cool. I've heard of that place. Never been there, but I've heard of it, and I've heard great things. So I'm sure they'll love you down there. Yeah, I'm excited. It'll be yeah, nice. it's it's a really cool place. They've like remodeled it, and um, I don't know. It's just it, everywhere you play, you know, you just got to kind of fill the crowd and see what it's going to be like. It could be a rowdy crowd. It could be a really quiet crowd. So, but this one's just a very relaxed vibe. I, I love it. I love stuff like that where I can just go and sing. Like I'm just sitting on my couch at home <laughs> singing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a good vibe to that. And everybody's like, yeah, that's just soothing. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, it's all, it's better than throwing beer bottles, right? <laughs> well, gratefully, I have never had that happen. <laughs> I always make jokes about it, but. Uh -huh. And, you know, I've never had anyone too rowdy at a show either. I've, knock on wood, I've been really lucky um, in the years that I've been doing this. So it's always been a good time. You know, I, I only played one place in my entire life that had a, a chicken wire up. And it was in Georgia. Oh. Yeah, I played a place in Georgia with chicken wire. And uh, when, when we got there, I was like, I was laughing about it because, you know, um, Georgia, you know, of course, is like, well, yeah, it'd have to be rowdy, but there was no, it was like a, there was dry counties all around. So it was three hour drive to get there from anywhere. And uh, mm -hmm. everybody would drive in for three hours because they couldn't drink anywhere else. Right. So this was like, it was, when I got there, I was like, mm, I don't know about this place, but then it filled up, you know, and, uh, but the club owner guy, he ensured us, he's like, no one has ever actually thrown a beer bottle at the band. That's just there in case they throw it at another patron and it catches it. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's hilarious. I feel like that should be that should be in a country song, something about chicken wire and yeah. beer bottles. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real. It's a very real thing at, at uh, places. But, again, I think it's not that – because most everybody loves the music. They're, they're not really throwing it at the band. That's just a movie thing. It's right. in case one got into a fight or something got thrown just to protect the the band's equipment and stuff like that. That's really what it's for. That's classic. I yeah. love that. Chicken wire. Yep. There's some places <laughs> that are fancier than that and they have plexiglass, you know, too. But <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I've I have seen that. Yes, I have I've played at a place where they have that, yeah. but And I think that's for Chicken wire, sound that's, a, that's too. a budget. Yeah, just, just plexiglass is probably for sound to keep the stage volume down, but chicken wire is definitely there to keep yeah. things off of the band. <laughs> That's hilarious. Not because they're singing bad. They they book the best groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but I know you you always hope that you don't suck when you do a show and that people like you and ask you ask you back. I mean, that's always the goal, right? <laughs> so That's always the goal. For sure. Well, I better wrap up. Um I want to talk to you more though. So you'll call us back or send us some of your peeps, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for chatting with me. Um, people can check out my music. Um, I, I still have the same old website that I've had since I started this, uh, Kimra-music.com. Um, I'm on Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, iTunes, all those fun sites. So check me out and, you know, let me know if you like it or not. I take good and bad feedback. <laughs> it's, it's how I improve as an artist. So, uh, yeah, this has been fun, Doug. It's been good catching up with the camera. It really has. I'm I'm glad yeah. that you're on the show, and I'm glad you're doing well. And congratulations. Way late. I don't even know how old your kid is now, but congratulations on the baby. I know. She'll be four, four. in May. It's insane. It's insane. Four going on 14. She's She likes to sing like Mama, you know. she. I think she thinks I know every song. She'll be like, Mom, sing this song. I'm like, I don't 
I don't know all the words <laughs> to this, but I'll try, you know, but it's because I'm singing all the time. So I have high hopes for her in the future. And I hope she wants to pursue music in some type of avenue when she gets older. But um, yeah, I mean, th- also, thanks for always supporting me. You know, I'm, I'm nobody. <laughs> and uh, I just really enjoy doing this. And I hope I can do it for a really long time. And I appreciate people like the, you that have always been there. Um, you're real, you're fun, you love music, and I, I think that's great. So thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. It's an honor, Kimra. I think you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll see you soon. I'll, I'll come to a show or something sometime. So it'll be great. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. That was Kimra on the phone with us here on Lunch with Doug. And uh, check out her stuff. she give you the, the links there. And if you need to hear that again, of course, they're on demand. So you can rewind and listen to it again. And go uh, go get on her, like her, follow her, and all that good stuff. It really helps out the artist when you do that. So we'll see you again. Thanks for spending your lunchtime with us today on Lunch with Doug. We're here today thanks to the generous support of our esteemed sponsors. Harry Frog Graphics, your go-to destination for all things graphic at 150 North Commercial Street in Nevada, Missouri. Reach out to them at 417-381-1077. Karen McNair, your friendly neighborhood nutritionist. Dial 269-267-4644 to learn about the monthly information class or to schedule a personal consultation. John's Barbershop, located at 121 West Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri. Open Tuesday through Friday. Walk-ins are welcome. No appointment needed. American Legion Post Number 2, located at 402 East Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri. Newly remodeled with a fresh, clean look, gaming machines, and new smoke heaters. Open to the public. Express Printing and Hydrographics, a print shop and a commercial-grade hydro-dipping facility with custom wide-format hydro-film printing capability. Located at 1414-4 East Highway 54 at Adams Plaza. Contact them at 417-283-2005. Thank you for choosing to spend your lunchtime with me.